Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and as much as Satan is trying to get in the way, we are not going to let him. We are going to celebrate God because God is worthy of all of our praise and glory. Um, at the, about this point in time, I'd have, probably have uh, Minister Bryant uh, hit a key, hit a note on the uh, keyboard and, and and tell everybody, let's just give God a hand clap of praise. But I don't have, I'm not going to tell him to do that. I'm just going to do that myself. And if you want to praise God for who he is and who he has been to you, then I invite you to do that this morning. Um, there is so much going on in the world that if we did not have God, I'm not sure how we would make it anyway. And for all those who don't believe or don't think God is real, um, here, let me give you a hug because I, I don't know how you're going to make it um, because our God is real. And as the sign says behind me, he is risen. He is alive. And because he is alive, we have an opportunity to not only face today and tomorrow, but to be successful, to not just survive, but to thrive. And so I'm celebrating God this morning. I am very excited because this is the fourth Sunday, which means our young people will be in charge of the service. So as far as the prayer, the scripture, and the singing goes, uh, we will hear from our young people, which is a great thing. As I've told you, our young people are not the church of the future. They are the church of the present, because if we don't have the young people involved in the present, they won't be here in the future and neither will we. And so with that, I want to invite uh, Minister Reginald Bryant to uh, come forward and open us with a song. Minister Bryant, if you would. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Brianna Samuel, will you please come with this morning's prayer? Good morning. Can you please close your eyes and bow your head? Lord, thank you for blessing us to see another day and allowing us to meet again and praise your name. I pray that your peace and joy fill our cups to overflowing and your grace sustains us. Thank you for being our healer, our protector, our provider, and for every good thing that comes from your hand. We lift up to you all who we love and care for and ask that you bless them and meet their needs. 
We also ask that you continue to mold us into the likeness of Jesus and keep us covered under his blood. Lord, we thank you for your unconditional love, and we commit this day to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, uh, Sister Brianna. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite um, Sister Allie Cochran to come with this morning's scripture. Oh, yes. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so a person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This too I see is from the hands of God for without him who can eat or find enjoyment to the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Amen. Amen. And uh, the, that was Lamentations chapter 2, verses 24 through 26. Lamentations 2, 24 through 26. Thank you very much, Ali. And thank you, Brianna, again. Uh, Minister Bryant, would you please come with another song? Gave me my hands to reach out to me to show him your love and your perfect plan. He gave me my ears, I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cries of sinners, but cannot wipe away their tears. He gave me my voice to speak your word, to sing all your praises to those who never heard. But with my eyes, I see a need for more availability. I've seen hearts that have been broken, so many people to be free. Lord, I'm available to you. My I give to you. I'll do what you say. Do what you belong. So show someone the way and enable me to say, My story is empty and I. Now I'm giving back to you all the tools you gave to me. My hands, my ears, my voice, my eyes, so you can use the as you please. I have emptied out my cup so that you can fill me up. Now I'm free, I just want to be more available to you, Lord, I'm available to you, oh, my will I give to you, I do what you say, do what you will, Lord, to show someone the way, and the name of me 
Amen. 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 And so we have to ask the question, is that just Minister Bryant saying that he is available or is he speaking on behalf of the rest of us? Um, I think we've shared it before that the best, the greatest ability that God is looking for from us is availability. Are we available? If we are available, he can do some great things with us. But if we are waiting till we feel like we are able nothing's really going to get done. And so I challenge us to simply be available to him. All right. Um, at this time, I would like to share some announcements with you. Um, as always, we want to ask that you continue in your participation in worship by giving. Uh, not only do we give of our time and our talents, but we also give of our treasure to the uh, work of God um, because he is worthy. He has asked us, the only thing he's asked us to prove him in is in our giving. And so um, I um, ask you to, um, to give. Uh, let's see. To this week, uh, our week of studies uh, begins tonight. Uh, the women will have their book club uh, Bible study and uh, they will be looking at the book, Heart of Gold. Uh, continuing in the series by Beverly Jenkins. And um, so we encourage all of the ladies to uh, log on uh, this, state, this same channel and be a part of the study. Even if you have not finished the book, get on for the opportunity to share and to laugh with each other. Uh, for men's Bible study tomorrow night, we will be in Numbers chapter 15. Numbers chapter 15, we are watching the children of Israel as they debate whether or not God's promise is good enough for them. Now, I know, of course, none of you being good Christians have ever doubted a promise of God. And so we're going to study some people that have. And then when you run into somebody who does doubt a promise of God, you'll have a story to tell them. And so, um, but strongly encourage all the brothers to come out tomorrow night at 630, Numbers chapter 15. And then on Wednesday night, as we are studying God's sent males and females, we will be looking at Isaiah. So we will be in Isaiah chapter six, Isaiah chapter six, um, looking at the, uh, the sent one of Isaiah and see what we can learn about his being sent that we can apply to our being sent. Uh, also, just want to remind you that um, Facebook and YouTube are available for our Sunday school lesson uh, sessions, worship services, and adult Bible studies. So we, we encourage you to, um, if, if you miss something, please go out there and watch. And if, um, if you know someone who would benefit from what we are showing, we encourage you to uh, send them to YouTube or Facebook so that they can watch as well. Uh, church calendar for April. April is just about over, so we don't have any events uh, uh, remaining for this month. But I would like to thank those who prayed and participated in our vaccine event that we held this past Monday. Um, it was a great event. We had about 40 people come out and get their shots. Um, and uh, it, I knew it was worth it when the 91-year-old woman came walking across the street on her walker to get her shot. We were in the right place at the right time. And so um, I think uh, we did a good thing. We will be back again. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and do it this way. Um, let's see. We will be back again on the 10th. We will have, we'll be back uh, in Valencia in Stoner Hill on the 10th so that folks can come back and get their second shot. And anybody who still hasn't been vaccinated, they will have the opportunity to get their shot there as well. Um, as you see, May is already stacking up to be a fairly busy month. Um, 
We've got a couple of events on the 6th that I will talk about in a minute. Uh, Mother's Day is on the 9th. You don't ever have to remind uh, anyone about Mother's Day because everybody remembers Mother's Day. It's Father's Day. I will go ahead and announce the third Sunday in June is Father's Day. Let me just go ahead and start that announcement now so y'all can go ahead and, and get ready. But Mother's Day is the second Sunday of May. Um, and then uh, the 8th District will have, we will have our mid-year convocation it will be May 13th through the 15th, and that will be a virtual event. And as soon as I get the information, I will share that with you. And then May 30th is the birthday of the church. It is Pentecost Sunday. That means it'll be 50 days from Easter. Um, let's see, let me go. So the two things that we have coming up on the 6th, one is a prayer breakfast. Um, and this is an opportunity uh, provided by the Louisiana Stop Solitary uh, coalition and they are doing a a prayer time on the 6th of may that morning uh to bring to light and to lift up to god the horrors of solitary confinement for those who are incarcerated and so we've been asked to participate um and just to be online and to pray and so uh take a screenshot do whatever you have to do so that you i will send out this flyer to all of us as well uh, after church today. But uh, if you would like to participate in this, um, we have the opportunity. It will be on the 6th at 7.45. Later on on the 6th, we will be celebrating the graduation of Carrington Fuller. Now, I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure when I fell asleep and all of a sudden he went from high school graduate to now he's getting ready to be a college graduate. I Somebody, somebody on this line is getting old. And I don't know who it is, but Carrington will be graduating. Unfortunately, we will not be rolling deep and driving to New Orleans and making a fool and embarrassing him um, because that's what I would like to do at his graduation. But we, we will be able to watch online at Xavier, uh, Xavier's <laughs> website. And so I just want to encourage you to um, get out, get online. Uh, we will be doing something for our graduates. We actually have a number of them graduating from, well, from Carrington College and several more graduating from high school. And so we will do something for them as we did last year. Um, but I don't think Carrington's online. Um, I'll send him, I'll send him my screaming just so that he will have it because that's, I want him to know that his pastor is very, very proud of him. And I do want to make <laughs> I do want to make note of one of the lines on here, business of finance, highest GPA honoree. And so that is definitely worthy of celebration. Uh, Sister Smith, if, if we can get him back to Shreveport, we're going to add him to the finance committee. See, he's finance. <laughs> finance. We're going to put him on the finance committee so that he can help us. Because one of the problems, this is just an aside, I like to say this. One of the problems we have in the church is we have very well-meaning people who are handling the money and doing all this stuff, but they haven't been trained. Here's a brother that's been trained and we need to utilize those skills. Those skills are not just good in the banking industry. We need those skills in the church as well. God's kingdom needs them. So uh, everybody let's celebrate Carrington. And again, there'll be a list coming out of all the other folks that are graduating and we will celebrate them as well. Um, let's see. And um, I do, at this time, I do want to welcome uh, Presiding Elder Richard Starks. He has joined us. We had our quarterly conference last Tuesday, and uh, the elder said he would be here. And because he is a man of his word, I'm looking right at him. And so, Elder, would you like to say anything? I, I, I don't want to. I want to be appropriate. Yes, good morning. I don't want to prolong the time. Um, I'm just happy uh, to be here with you this morning and to share in this worship experience. So good morning to each and every one. Hey Amen. Thank you very much, Elder, for your presence and for your leadership. Um, the Elder and I had a great phone call yesterday as we were talking about some of the things that are coming forward. And some of you, I want you to pay attention to this slide because this slide has changed from last week. Last week, the slide said that we would uh, be uh, return, expect to return to worship uh, the middle of May, the first part of June. Um, after talking to the elder yesterday, um, we have been informed that uh, the first Sunday of June is the target date for us to be back in worship. Now, again, some, oh, what, Pastor, what about this? What about this? I don't know. Let me just go ahead and say that right now. I don't know. 
I don't know how many people. I don't know about mass. I I I have some ideas. I have some thoughts, but I have nothing solid. And as soon as I do know, I will let you know. But if you have questions, feel free to ask. Just don't expect any immediate answers. Besides, I don't know. But we so we are targeting the sixth of June, um, and so we do have a lot of work to do with the facility and and stuff like that. And uh, the, the trustees and I are working uh, in that direction, but we will be ready to do something. But also for uh, our family in Florida and Tennessee and all of y'all, you you are part of this as well. The only thing that should really change for you guys is the background. <laughs> I won't be sitting in my dining room, but otherwise we plan to still be online and we're gonna do this because we believe in the church universal and you are a part of this church. And so do not be afraid. All right, and um, let's see. Um, I do have a card that I need to read. It says on the front, many thanks to the St. Mary Church family and the main word is family. The Hall family would like to thank you for your love and support at this time. The sudden passing of a loved one is never easy. We are so grateful for the phone calls and the prayers that came our way. We never felt forgotten by our church family and we could feel uh, the prayers lifting us up. Thank you for being there and keeping us in your prayers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, the Hall family. We love you all and thank God for you. And that's from Wade and Mona Hall on the thank path you. of her brother. So, um, and so uh, that's what we're supposed to do. And um, also as we, you know, we're still, because last I checked, does anybody have a book that says how long you're supposed to mourn? Nope. So as long as you are feeling the loss, we are here to help you. That, that, that's the bottom line. And so for uh, Sister Vera Tucker, who I know is on Facebook, for Sister Vicki Murray and that family, for all the families that are mourning, we are still here. There, there is no time limit. We're not going to say, hey, you should be over that by now. Because who are we to tell you when you should be over someone you love being gone? And so uh, Brother Wade Flood, um, same, same. Uh, we're, we're not, we don't want to leave anyone out. And if you have a need, we simply ask, I think the song, Lean On Me, when you're not strong, because that's what we're here for. And so we invite you to reach out to us. Um, let's see, I think that is all the announcements. Make sure, yep, that that one, good, 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 okay. You have uh, an yeah. announcement in the chat. Oh, I haven't, thank you. Ah, see, uh, okay, announcement in the chat. Oh, huh, I didn't even know that was a thing, but thank you. The 8th District is having a stay at home tea today at 3 p.m. 8th District Women's Missionary Society, I assume, Miss Lampkins. Yes. Yes, 8th District Women's Missionary Society is having a stay at home tea today at 3 p.m. Uh, where can they get that login information, ma'am? Uh, they have to register and it will be on Zoom. Okay. And for registration information, you can get with me. Okay, so get with uh, Miss Virginia Lampkins. Um, about registering and getting that link to the stay at home tea, tea today at 3 p.m. All right. And let's see. Oh, gosh. You know what? And I owe you an apology. Thank you very much. I, I got Sunday school and, um, <laughs> and the, the scripture that was read earlier wasn't Lamentations 2, 24 through 26. It was Ecclesiastes 2. 24 through 26. I am so sorry. I see somebody. Yeah, thank you for thank you for calling me out on that. We we studied Lamentations in Sunday school, and it was still with me. Uh, but we it was Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes two. I'll be reading it again in a minute. But Ecclesiastes two, verses 24 through 26. And I typed that out on Facebook, and everybody's like, "This pastor don't know anything about the Bible." And, and it would happen in front of the elder. See, man, I got the, I. <laughs> All right, let's stop the share here. Okay. All right, so um, let's see. I am very, very excited um, that as we prepare for the preaching moment um, that we will be inviting uh, Reginald Bryant II 
to come before us and uh, and prepare us for the preaching moment. Um, I, I'm excited, one, because the brother can sing, and two, I'm excited to see how tall he's gotten because, you know, it's been a long time since we've seen him. But at this time, I would like you to pray for, pray with uh, young Reginald Bryant II as he brings forth um, a blessing for us in song. Good job, son. Amen. 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 Good job. Good job. <laughs> I, I think we're going to have to get to the point, you know, and uh, little Reg, me and you will talk about it because uh, I need you to tell me when you stop being little Reg because I'm 52 and my aunt still call me little Robert. And um, I'm taller than both of them. And I'm 52 years old, and little Robert just doesn't see. So you tell me when little Reg is inappropriate. Um, when you, but I, I think you are moving well into your manhood, my brother, and I'm very proud of you and where you're going. And um, a definite pat on the back to your mother and your father as uh, they are training up a child in the way that he should go. And we we uh, celebrate that. Thank you. Um, to Allie Cochran for reading the scripture. Thank you to uh, Brianna Samuel, one of the newest students at Grambling University in the Masters of Social Work program for uh, giving us our opening prayer and always for Minister Bryant for his uh, leading us in song every Sunday. And so we celebrate each of you for your willingness to participate and also shout out to Sister Sonia Coleman for uh, doing the legwork in uh, making the request so that we actually have uh, people on Fourth Sunday to fill uh, the, each of these roles. And so I am very grateful uh, to you for your participation and uh, and uh, great, yeah, just grateful to you for you, period. And that goes for everybody who is online 
Um, especially, I do want to once again shout out to the Florida folks, uh, several of which drove to actually drove to the church and then drove back and they're online here. And so, well, we appreciate you for that effort that you are taking to be a part of this service um, and indicating that it means something to you. And so, I thank you. I mean, the rest of y'all, I really appreciate my mama. I knew my mama was going to do it, but the fact that the rest of y'all come, that 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 that's a big deal to me. And so I, I praise God for that. Um, Sister Allie read for us Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter two, verses 24 through 26. We don't spend a lot of time in Ecclesiastes. So if you drop your Bible open and to Proverbs, and you go a little bit to the to, towards the back, towards the New Testament, you should run right into Ecclesiastes. And we will be uh, in the second chapter and just looking at the 24th through the 26th verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 24 through 26. <clears throat> and in the Christian Standard Bible, it says, there is nothing better for a person than to eat, drink, and enjoy his work. I have seen that even this is from God's hand, because who can eat and who can enjoy life apart from him? For to the person who is pleasing in his sight, he gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and accumulating in order to give to the one who is pleasing in God's sight. This, too, is futile and a pursuit of the wind. For a few, for, for a few moments, I want to speak to you from the topic, the best way to get better. The best way to get better. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for your great faithfulness. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for wanting to use us. And thank you for using us. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to share in this word together from different parts of the country, from different parts of the world. We thank you that you have seen us through danger seen and unseen. And we thank you that you want to spend this quality time with us. And so, Lord, we simply ask that you once again will block out everything that is outside of you and your word. Help us to hear you. Help us to have a profound sense of your presence in our living rooms, on our back porches, in our cars, wherever we happen to be right now, Lord, so that we can be transformed, so that we can be changed, so that we can leave this service better than we came in. We say a special prayer for the young people, Lord God, and by young, we mean anybody younger than you, that we would hear you, that we would get to know you better because there's still something that you want to say to us. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Now, Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time this past <clears throat> Wednesday talking about better, and I said one day I'm going to teach a Bible study on better and what the Bible says about being better, and I really believe God was like, well, you can teach a Bible study whenever you want, but we need to talk about it this Sunday, because one of the things that is very true for whoever's online right now, from the youngest to the oldest, everybody's talking about being and getting better. I want to be a better athlete. I need better grades. I need a better job. I, I got to get better in my health. I got to get better in my marriage. I want to better this and I want to better that. And everybody's talking about better. But my question is, better than what? My question is, how do we define it? Last week, I shared with you that I'm a math guy that I, I love math, and I wasn't going to bring my board out because I had another math problem for you, but I had a couple of people who turned us off last week, and so I didn't want to do that, and so, so I won't talk about being a math guy this week, but I am a word guy as well. I love words. My mom taught me to spell playing Scrabble. I love doing a crossword and a word search, and, and one of the greatest gifts my mother ever bought me was a, was a thesaurus, 
It was just a book of words to go with other words. It was beautiful. I still use it today. I love words. But one of the things that I have learned is that having words is one thing, but the meaning of the words is more important. See, we, we watch on TV, everybody's like, we want justice. We want justice. My question is, well, what do you mean by justice? We want equality. Okay, great. That sounds good. But what do you mean by that? We want better. Well, what do you mean by better? I, we need to know because I, I'm trying to figure out how can you get to better if you can't define it? How, how, what is a better job? What is a better life? What is a better marriage? What is better? Oh, Pastor, this is better. This is better. Well, I, I got to help you before you start throwing out answers and filling up the chat and doing all of this about what is better. I think we need to figure out not a way to get better, but we got to find out the best way to get better. See, best is a, is a superlative. Best is a word that says, hey, there's nothing better than that. And, and so often we just go any old way. But why don't we try the best way? And I got to tell you, the best way starts with the word of God. Of course, I would say that. I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. Where else would I go? But the word of God will tell us what the best way to get better is. And why, why do I believe that? I believe that because if you look in the Bible, 121 times you can find the word better. In the book of Ecclesiastes alone, that only has 12 chapters, 21 times the word better shows up. You go to Proverbs, also written by King Solomon, who is the wisest man in the world. If he's the wisest man in the world, and as he is in touch with Almighty God, and he spends all of this time talking about better, maybe we should trust him. Maybe we should trust him and see what he says about being better. Because if the wisest man in the world says, hey, this is better, and he's speaking in the word of God that's saying this is better, maybe we should go with what this said. And so I want to challenge us for a moment, young and old, rich and poor, wherever we might be in the spectrum of life and in the spectrum of living, we all say we want to get better. But why don't we take a moment to figure out what the best way to get better is. And so we look at the scripture and I, I had a number to choose from and I simply chose from uh, Ecclesiastes chapter two, verses 24 through 26, where the, the writer Solomon says, there is nothing better. There's nothing better. There, there, there's, there's nothing better. That, that would almost say that this is the best. This is the best thing. This is the best way. And we would be wise if we caught on to this. And maybe this would stop some of the churning and some of the things that we are going through in life that we could just figure out, hey, this is the best way to be better. And so what does Solomon tell us? He, he tells us, if we look at the second half of verse 24, he says, I have seen that even this is from God's hand. See, the best way for us to get better is to have a clear perspective from God. So we want to define, and I said the definitions are important. Well, we need to let God define what better is. What is better for you? Because what is better for you might not be better for me. Better for you might be running marathons, but God knows I'm too fat and too old to run marathons. And so your better does not equal my better. So I cannot use you as my standard. I need to use God as my standard because God says, I know the plans that I have for you. If he's got plans, then he knows what is better for us. This is the better way to go. This is the better school to go. This is the better way to act. This is better. And we've got to go to God to get a clear perspective. The problem is some of us are too close to the problem. We all rather be, I can't see it. But you know, when we back up, we get a better view, and God's got the best view. Somebody said he sits high, and he looks low. He looks into the lives of his people, and he tells us, the word says, you will hear a, a, a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. What is God telling us to do? I, I need a better job. Well, what is a better job? If God gave you the job you got, maybe that's the better job right there. Because too often, we live in a grass is greener world. Ooh, look at what they're doing over there. They're doing that. That must be better. 
I told y'all before, if the grass is greener, do you know what makes grass greener? Manure. The reason why their grass is greener is because there's more manure on that side. And too many times, many of us have stepped over the fence because the grass was greener over there and we stepped over and we wonder why it smells bad over here because we have been doing things that weren't better. They looked better. They sounded better, but were they better? And God has the perfect view. Now, maybe, maybe he can't be trusted. Oh, pastor, don't say that. Well, no, I'm, I'm just saying, if God says, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. He will tell you the better way to go. But if he's telling you the better way to go, you're like, mm -mm, I don't like that way. Then obviously he can't be trusted. And then you go off and do your own thing. And then you come and call to the pastor. Pastor, I don't know what's going on. What did God tell you to do? Well, God said I need to love my wife, but I didn't want to do that. That means he told you what was better. As a matter of fact, here's an interesting thing. In the, in, he, in, the, in the Hebrew language, the word that is translated better is the word tob, T-O-B, or somewhere you might see it spelled T-O-W-B. And interestingly enough, that word is also translated good. And so here's the thing. If God says it's good, and we see over and over again, over 500 times the word good shows up. If God says it's good, it must be better. Whatever God says is good is better for us. Not, not, not the thing that you say is good, because that's why we end up in that whole 80-20 situation. I'm looking for a better wife, but all I'm looking for is the stuff that she does that my wife doesn't do. And all she does is this 20%. And I'm saying, oh, that's better. But when I finally get her, I realize she didn't do the 80% that my wife does. See, God says, hey, love the wife of your youth. Stick with her. Go with it, because that's better. And so we need to get God's clear perspective. And where do we find his perspective? We find it in his word. There is nothing new under the sun, Solomon will say, tell us. And so everything we're dealing with, God has already spoken to. And he will tell us how to do better if we'll simply ask him. If we'll simply listen. If we'll simply do. He will tell us better if we get his perspective. But... Uh, uh, many of you, uh, we haven't shared this, but Ayana, who is uh, currently working at McDonald's right now, she hates McDonald's. She hates McDonald's with a passion. And she has come home to us, and she has complained about McDonald's, and she has told us how bad McDonald's is and how they treat her and how everything is wrong. And so my daughter, praise God, finally went out and got her another job. She went out and found a job working in the mall. Because she, Why? Because she says it's better. I don't know about that yet, but she did find another job. And so when she came back this week to her boss at McDonald's, likes her a lot. Remember, he loves her. He, he wants to help her and do great things. And so she finally complained to him about a couple of things because he said, well, I don't have a code that will allow me to make to fix my own mistakes. And the, the boss said, oh, you need a code? I'll give you a code. And I'm, only, I'm still only making $7.50 an hour. And he's like, oh, well, I'll rate, give you a raise of $10 an hour. And I said, you know what? That's funny. If you had went for the boss's perspective, you would have had better right where you were. I'm just saying, I, I, I'm just throwing that out to somebody. Somebody's looking out here for better when we should be looking up there for better. And if we go to God and say, God, here's what I see. What do I need to do? His perspective can change the things that are going on around us. If we're going to get better, we need a clear perspective from God. But not only do we need a clear perspective from God, we also need to be in a complementary position with God. See what he says in verse 25. He says, because who can eat and enjoy life apart from him? See, part of our problem is our better seems to be separated from God. We, we want better without God. And Solomon says, but who can enjoy life? Who can have better if God's not a part of it? And so I'm saying that your life will always be unsatisfactory if God is not a part of it. You are incomplete without him. No, you are not incomplete because you don't have a man. You are not incomplete because you don't have a woman. You are incomplete because your relationship with God is lacking. 
He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. He, he doesn't say apart from a husband. He doesn't say apart from a wife. He doesn't say apart from this job or that job. He says apart from me. Our life should be centered on relationship with God. I, I know Brother Wade, I know you like that. It's all about that relationship. If we have that relationship, you will be complete. That's why I said you have to be in a complimentary position. Now, because I'm a word guy, I had to throw this one out here. I, I should have got my, honey, I should have got my whiteboard out. Complimentary can be spelled with two ways. One is C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T-A-R-Y. That's the complimentary when I say, oh, that's a nice dress. Oh, I love the way you have your hair done. Oh, that's a great car. That's complimentary. That's I'm saying something nice about you. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about a position where us and God just flatter one another. I'm talking about a position where we allow God to complete us. Complimentary spelled with an E instead of an I. If we are in a position where we allow God to connect with us and us to connect with God, then we will be in position to receive better. It's about, it, 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 all of us cartoon, you know, okay, I'm going to go through everything that I love. Um, math, words, comic books, cartoons. One of my favorite co cartoons was the Justice League. And Reverend Lindsay McGee and I, we do this all the time. They had, for at one point, they had what they helped, they called the Wonder Twins. And the, the Wonder Twins were two young people who were heroes from outer space that their powers activated whenever they touched, whenever they were in position with each other. When they were separated, they had no power. But when they came together, they had power that they could use. See, some of us need to wonder twin ourselves with God. We need to walk up every day and say, God, I want better. And we need to put it and let him say, hey, power of God, activate. Now I have it because I am in connection with him. But one of the reasons, one of the biggest problems we have is we have a separation anxiety. We live apart from God and we wonder why we have anxiety. The Bible says, apart from me, you can't do nothing. Guess what I'm doing works? Maybe because you're separated from God. Separated from God. As a matter of fact, if you read 1 Corinthians 13, the great love chapter, I think some of us skip over this. It says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I, though I have all faith, that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it gains me nothing. I gain nothing. I have nothing. I am nothing if I'm separated from love. But what, is, what does John tell us? God is love. And so we're never going to have better in our lives if we do not have a better relationship with God, if we are not in touch with him, if we are not in position so that we can receive him. There's a reason why God is around us. Jesus is God with us, and the spirit is God in us. He's trying to be everywhere we need him to be so that we could be in contact. Because he knows because of the plans that he has for us, because of the things that he's called us to do, we cannot do it without him. We will never have better apart from God. He says in Mark, Matthew chapter 19, with men, this is impossible. It's impossible for you to be a better wife. It's impossible for you to be a better husband. It's impossible for you to be a better Christian apart from God. But with God, all things are possible. I can do all things. I can be better. I can be better with Christ. See, with Christ, I, I have to have, I have to be in a complimentary position. I have to be in a position to allow him to complete me. What movie was that? Um, oh gosh, one of those stupid rom-coms that, that my wife made me go watch. And the guy knocked on the door and the woman said, will you complete me? She don't complete me. God completes me. And I am empowered to walk with her, to help her be complete in him. That that's who completes you. And if you are waiting for some man or some woman to complete you, you will never have better. But better comes in relationship because who can be happy? Well, if I had more money, really? So all those rich people killing themselves. That, that's the song we, we talked about it a few weeks ago. The more money I have, the more problems I see, that's not the answer. That, that, that's not the answer. A new wife is not the answer. A new car is not the answer. What, what is the answer is a deeper relationship with God. 
And if you have a deeper relationship with God, you will know happiness like you've never seen it before. Psalm 16 and 11 says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Yep, uh-huh. Get you that new iPhone. Oh, I got the new iPhone. Woo! Until next year, when the next iPhone comes out. Now you're like, my iPhone got, because it ain't better. It'll never satisfy. Nothing outside of God will satisfy. And so I, I, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you that if you want better, the best way to get better is to have a clear perspective from God. The best way to get better is to be in a complementary position with God. But last but not least, the best way to be better is to have a commitment to please God. Look what it says here in verse 26. For to the person who is pleasing in his sight, he gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner... He gives the task of gathering and accumulating in order to give to the one who is pleasing in God's sight. This is futile. This too is futile and a pursuit of the wind. See, so many of us wake up in the morning dedicated to going to get better. I'm going to get better in my health. I'm going to go find a better job. I'm going to go do this. And what Solomon says is, hmm, please God. If you please God, he will take care of all of that other stuff. Oh, wait, I, I know the brother wasn't born yet, but, but I think Matthew wrote, hey, he quoted Jesus as saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And if you do that, all of these things better will be handed to you. And see, righteousness, according to Dr. Tony Evans, is living to please God. Seek first living to please God, and God will take care of better. See, the better is with God. And when God sees you with him, he's like, oh, I can't wait. What happened with Solomon? Solomon knows this. God came to Solomon and said, Solomon, whatever you want, you can have it. You want a better car? You want a better PlayStation? You want a better internet experience? What do you want, Solomon? Solomon said, mm-mm. All I want is wisdom. And asking for wisdom, please God. And God said, well, because you asked me for wisdom, because you asked me for this right thing, I will give you all this other stuff. And see, he sought God first. And God blessed him. And so many of us, we are trying to seek everything else. We're trying to keep up with the Joneses and the Smiths. We're trying to do everything about these other people. We want what they have. We want to get what they got. We want to go where they've been. And God's like, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you better. And until we need to have a commitment of waking up in the morning and says, I'm going to please God. And what's the best way to please God? Obey. Just do what he says. If you do it, parents, parents, you turn around to your children right now and they say, Mom, Dad, how can we make you happy? Do what I say. That, that, that's it. If you just do what I say, oh my gosh, I'd be so happy. And God is looking at us. He's saying the same thing. Because if you do what I say, that means you love me. Keep my commandments. and then I'll, not, not because you're listening to the pastor. Not because you're wearing a suit. Not because you're carrying a Bible. It's because you do what I say. You keep my commands. And when you keep my commands, I know that you love me. And that pleases me. Because that says you have faith. And the writer of Hebrews tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. We've got to be people of faith. We've got to be people who walk through going, God, how can I make you happy today? And if we make God happy, better is on the way. Our focus needs to not be on the stuff, but it needs to be on the God who controls all the stuff. Because here's the funny thing. If you've got that kind of relationship with God, you don't even so much care about the stuff no more. It's not caught up because I know that God's going to bless me. God can bless me in this job. See, I, I, I told y'all the story when I got sent to Montana. Uh, Linda, Linda knows this very well. We wanted to leave. I, actually, I told her, we're going to go to Montana. We're staying for two years, and then we're leaving. Because because I, I that's not better. That's not what I want. And we got up there. And slowly, my relationship with God changed. That I wanted to be more about what God wanted. 
Next thing I know, we're up there for five years and I'm trying to stay for a sixth year because all of a sudden what I thought wasn't better, God said, watch what happens when I get involved in it. And God is calling you out. He's calling you out, high school student. He's calling you out, college student. He's calling you out, grandmother. He's calling you out, father and mother. He's calling you out and say, hey, I know you want a better life, but you can't have it without me. So come to me. Commit yourself to finding me, not finding church, not finding religion, but finding God. Because who, Solomon says, can enjoy any of this? Apart from God, doing what pleasing God, do what pleases him, and he will give. Give, and it shall be given unto you. This is a reaping and sowing moment. If we would reap good, we would, actually, if we would sow good, we would reap better. If we do good, we reap better. And there's our challenge every day. How can I do good? Oh, I, 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 need this. I need this to be better. Then go with God. Go with God and allow him to transform your life. Because what do you want? He says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So do you want what you think? Or do you want what God thinks? Every Sunday I say to you, now unto him, who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. And we're like, oh, yes. But then we live according to what we think and what we ask or imagine. But God says, I got something more for you. So if we would get closer to him, we'd be better. We'd have better. We could do better. I, I'm, I'm not telling you to not want better. You should want better. The world we live in, the things that we're seeing out there, we need a better world. But the best way to a better world isn't voting better. Or it, 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 it isn't putting our money in different stocks. It isn't moving to a different part of town. It isn't finding a new set of friends. The best way to better is getting a clear perspective from God. God, what do you say is better? In my life, where I'm at right now, what is the better way to go? What is the better thing to do? I need to know it from you. And God, because it's probably going to be hard, I'm coming close to you. I can't do it by myself. I can't have the better that I want apart from you. But what I can do is commit, commit to pleasing you today. I'm going to do what pleases you, God, because at least I can do that. That's better than anything else I had planned. So I'm going to please you. And then James says, every good and perfect gift comes from the father of life. He delights to give us all things freely. And if we would focus on him first, he would provide everything else. There's an old poem that says, good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good is better and your better is best. A lot of parents have told their kids that to keep their kids striving and continue, get, get better grades, be a better kid, all of this stuff. But what I want to say to you is go to God. Go, just, just go to God. I, I got it. He, he's got a plan for better. He's got a plan for best. But go to God. Start with, don't, don't finish with him. Start with him and let him lead you to what is good and to what is better and to what is best. Because if you would do that, then you would have rest. We always like to say, if you know better, you do better. And what I've told you since I've been your pastor, if you know better, you should do better because we know a whole lot of people that know better than ain't doing better. Well, today, I want to quote Jesus in John chapter 13, verse 17. He says, if you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I'd like to paraphrase it. If you know these things, you will be better if you do them. It'll be better for you if you get a clear perspective from God. It will be better for you if you put yourself in a complementary position with God. It will be better for you if you commit to please God. And then that will be the best way for you to get better. Let's pray. Eternal God, forgive us. Forgive us for going our own way. Forgive us for doing our own thing. Forgiven us for thinking that we knew it all about how to be better and even what is better. 
But Lord, today we have heard from your word. We've heard from your prophet, from Solomon. We have heard that there is a best way. And that best way involves you all the way. Lord God, open our eyes and give us a clear perspective. Lord God, draw us to yourself that we might be in a complimentary position. Lord God, encourage us, strengthen us, empower us that we might have a commitment to please. Lord God, if we do this, I believe we will know better. We will experience better. We will have better. We will get better. But Lord God, help us do it in the right order. I thank you for being willing to give us another chance to get and be better. Now, give us the good sense to walk in your word that we can receive everything you have for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Um, one of the things that I, I, uh, I didn't mention is in part of verse 26, um, after Solomon talks about those, what they get who please God, he talks about the sinner who doesn't please God. And he specifically says to the sinner, God gives the task of gathering and accumulating in order to give to the one who is pleasing God. Some of us have heard the verses that say that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Solomon is testifying to that fact right now. That, yep, yeah, if you're out there doing your own thing and living apart from God, that by definition makes you a sinner. You have come short. You've come short of his glory. You are doing your own thing. And everything that you are doing, you are doing for God to give to somebody else. Let's change that today. Let's change your life. If, if you've never joined God's team, if, you, if you've never said, hey, I want to be pleasing to him, you know what's pleasing to him? Your salvation. That, that's what he wants you to be saved. The reason why the world has not ended yet is because God wanted to give you one more chance. We, we don't need to wait till next week, next month. We can do that today. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day that your life can start getting better. I don't know what better looks like. He does. But let's get you into relationship so that you can be on the road to better. So if you're willing to do that, let's pray. Dear God, I want better in my life. I have sought things that I thought were better. But now I realize I was chasing after the wind. I am coming to you now for relationship because you are better than anything I have chased in the past. Lord, I've heard that to have relationship with you, I need to believe that Jesus died on the cross. And I need to believe that you raised him from the dead. Today, I confess I believe those things. I don't understand them, God, but I believe them. And because I believe them and confess Jesus as Lord, I am saved. And now that I'm saved, guide me to better. Not based on what I think or what I see, but based on what you know. I am a saved child of God, and now I will live a better life. Thank you, God. In the name of my Savior, I pray. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to reach out to you to actually ask you to reach out to me and reach out to uh, anyone who knows God so that you can grow in relationship with them so that uh, you can experience what this better life is. Because God's got a plan, and it's a great plan. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. All right. 
Um, let's see, put that. Let me move this up here so I can do this. Um, uh, presiding Elder Starks, I do want to thank you again for um, being a part of our service uh, for uh, Reginald II and for uh, Ali and for um, Brianna and for Minister Bryant. I want to thank you all for your participation in the service. Um, I do have a couple of closing announcements I need to make. Um, we're going to do another prayer. I guess uh, some of our young people have testing this week. All of them have testing this week, and so we definitely need to pray. Uh, somebody said something funny. They took prayer out of schools, but the truth we know is that as long as there are tests, there will be prayer in school. So young people, we're going to pray for you now, and I'll tell you a little secret. Um, when Before I took every test, when the teacher handed me the test, I turned it over um, so that I couldn't see, and I said, God, bring to remembrance everything I need to know to pass this test. Please note that I said bring to remembrance everything I know, because what that means is I studied. And I was just asking God to bring back to me what I had studied. Do not go into this test thinking God is going to jump it all in your head. You've got a part to play. We're going to pray for you, but we need you to do your part too. And when you and God come together, you will be complimentary. You will be complete, and you will do what God has asked you to do. Also, um, before we pray for that, um, no book club tonight uh, because of the online tea. And if you, uh, honey, I don't understand this last part here. Okay, so if you're interested in joining uh, the tea, contact my wife or Sister Virginia, and they will hook you up. And you can still have fellowship with folks, uh, just not about the book, all right? And um, with that, um, thank you all. I know some of our some of our members were having some uh, some complications from their second COVID shot. Uh, we are definitely praying for you and just letting you know that uh, the shot's important. The, that that will that pain that feeling will go away. And um, but you have done your part to uh, help us move past this virus. And so we uh, thank you and we encourage you in that. Um, with that, let's pray. Eternal God, uh, first and foremost for our young people, strengthen them. Give them wisdom, courage to know that with you all things are possible, which means passing that math test, passing that history test, passing that English test, passing that science test. It is possible with you. But Lord God also encourage them to do their part, to study, to crack the books, to ask the questions so that they will be prepared that when they go in, they will go in with confidence. They will go in confidence knowing that they're not going in alone, that they have a church family that is cheering for them and celebrating them, that they would do well enough to pass, that they would do their best. And Lord God, where they are weak, we pray you just build them up, that you will encourage them in the midst of them. We can't be there with them. We can't sit there with them and help them take the test, Lord, but you can. And so we ask for your presence to be real that you will give them a sense of confidence and knowing that they are going in there uh, with the power of God with them so that they might pass, so that they might do well. And Lord God, as they are taking tests in their classes, the rest of us are going to have to take tests in life. And so, Lord, I just ask that you help us to do better. Help us to study your word so that we might get your perspective. Help us to know that wherever we're at in whatever situation that we're facing, that we have the opportunity to be in a complimentary position with you. And Lord, help us to set our minds, to set our faces towards pleasing you in everything that we do. Lord, I thank you that better is available, that you have given us the best way to get and to be better. Now, Lord, be with each one of us as we separate one from another. Watch over us, guide us, bless us, and keep us. And most of all, use us for your glory. Now, unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, through the power that is at work within us, to the only wise God, be dominion, honor, glory, and power, now and forevermore. And all the people going to get better said, Amen. 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 Amen.
God bless you, everybody. Thank you very Amen. much for your time and attention. Amen. Great word. Amen. Great word, Pastor. Thank you again. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Good word. Good word. Hello, Thank everyone. You. Hello, everyone. Hey, Brother Wade. Hello, church family. Hey, Brother Wade. Hey, Barry. <laughs> Praying for you. There you go. I, I got you in mind as always. Thank you. And everyone else, praying for everyone else yeah. as well. Yeah. God bless you all, and you all have a blessed week. Thank you. You as well. Hey, I, I do want to say something. Uh, just the, the same Mary members that are online, because you will know who I'm talking about. Um, yesterday, the trustees, and Brother Smith, I don't even know if anybody told you about this. The trustees had a meeting at uh, at the church, and we, we, we met outside because it was a beautiful day. And we had the meeting, and we finished the meeting, and as we were trying to leave, for some reason, we couldn't break up the conversation. And we were just standing there talking and talking. And I was like, I got to go. I got stuff I got to do. And wouldn't you know, brother Freddie Brown got out of a truck yesterday. And the brother looked good. Haircut was all clean. Brother was dressed. And if we had left too soon, God knew better. And we got to see him. He's back in town. And so just want to ask y'all to keep praying for him. He, he seems like he's on the right track. And, uh, but it was a blessing for me and for the brothers that were there to see Freddie Brown. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, us getting back into contact with him. And so I wanted to thank God, uh, Brother Rodney reminded me to thank God for God knowing better. Miss Linda's showing a picture. Me. Say again, Brother Wade? Miss, Miss Linda's showing a picture. Well, oh yeah, there, there he is right there. There's Freddie right there. That doesn't <laughs> even look like him. Man, I'm telling you, the brother looked good. The brother looked real good. Yeah, he does. So yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a great, it was a great, a great morning. It was a great morning because of that. So thank you. Bye, Barry. Hey, Prudence. Charles. Hey. You did Hi. a great job at at, uh, at our earlier service. You sure Hi, did, thank Prudence. You. What thank did she you. do? What she, What did Miss Prudence do? <laughs> Come on, we had a farewell it. for our pastor. He's leaving, and she was um, she coordinated. coordinator. Oh, she coordinated everything coordinated. for it. I thought yeah. she was the guest speaker. I was gonna tell y'all to give me the link. <laughs> Let me go watch her. <laughs> no, she did, no, no, she no, did no. speak. Now she did speak, and she spoke very well. Uh -huh. So God yeah. is blessed. You know, when you do something for a person that you really like, it's an yeah. easy job to do. And well, he is somebody that has grown. I mean, I really come to care for this young man and his family, and I really wish him the very best. So mm -hmm. it was not hard to say say what you have to say, you know. Right. You know? He's for real. All yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, and he, he really did just... four years. Yes. Thank God. Oh, my and he, I think he was very appreciative too, Prudence. I what think the, so. What the Chapel family did for him. Yeah. And his family. It was yeah. a great turnout. Yeah, yeah it was. It was a great turnout. Oh, was really we filled the parking lot. Yeah. Thank you. you all are great people. I'm not surprised. You, Everyone on this screen is so sweet and thoughtful to St. Mary. And we just love y'all. So, so we love you too. too. It's, easy to believe. it's been a blessing to be part of this family. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh. And I get this card for my birthday and I'm like, my goodness, I just kind of met this woman, but you have reached out. And I, I think that, you know, uh, Brother Bob Payne is really blessed to have this congregation too. Yeah. You know, I can yeah. tell yeah. you all. We love him. We love him. We love our pastor. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that my church family is here with me because now Ms. Judah don't tell me every time she sees me. That he's her pastor and he's not going anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> to hear that he's, he's our pastor too. He's our pastor too. Yes, yes he, he ain't coming to Florida. And am my presiding elder leave, oh my goodness, I wish he still would have been on here. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one make the recommendations to the bishop. I need to talk to him. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't hear Y'all be blessed. I got to get ready to cook with my son. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm glad he didn't hear you, Miss Bunny. 
<laughs> he didn't hear you. When that time rolls yeah. around again, you'll start praying for him to be there too. Okay. Okay, we pray. Yeah, y'all yeah, keep him right there. I'm gonna get yeah. Somewhere down the line, I'm, I'm going to propose that that we do a, a, a road trip, Ooh. take the mail course, and then those of us that are on here, we all just go on, just go on over there and get ourselves a place to stay and, and be at church at St. Mary's. It's gonna come. It's I'm gonna come. speaking it into existence. It's, it's gonna come. come. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. It's in the works. I'm, I'm just praying that the, the car will head to Florida before we get there. <laughs> <laughs> You're so bad. How you doing, brother Wade? <laughs> I'm doing well. Who are you talking you. to? St. Mary's Way. St. <laughs> Mary's Way. Okay. I'm doing well, thank you. I was, and I wanted to say, I know a lot of people have gotten off the line, but once again, thank you all. Uh, thank you all for uh, the prayers, number one, the, the cards, the thoughts, everything. Uh, I was going to go ahead and, 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 and read out the names, um, but uh, uh, my wife told me, she said, uh, uh, don't do that because you're going to forget someone. Oh, and, and so I just put the family, but for everyone, for the thoughts of the prayers, the cards. Thank you very much. Uh, my wife would have, uh, uh, she's listening, um, but uh, she has uh, laryngitis. So mm -hmm. she, I've, I've been telling her to rest up her voice, to rest up so that way she can go ahead and uh, start for, uh, you know, next week because she'll need her voice uh, for work as well. So, Amen. but once again, you know, thank you, you know, uh, and I know I always say, and people will say, you don't have to say thank you, but I want to say thank you. Yes. I know this yeah. is what we're supposed to be doing, you know, as brothers and sisters in Christ. As I said before, and this is always true, we're going to need to be somebody's rock because somebody's going to need us to lean on. And then mm -hmm. at a point in time, we're going to need to lean on someone and yeah. we're going to need to lean on that rock. So uh, thank you all for this time, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, because uh, it, it's difficult. You know, uh, yeah. when you go through uh, uh, death, you yes, know, uh, and, yes, and just trying to be somebody's rock, you know, yes. and thank God, because we can look back to where we came from, you know, and then we can, we're not where we need to be, but we're a whole bunch further. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. Yes. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, we are. And then having a loving family, you know, having a great church family. And when people say, you know, hey, uh, I got this card or, or or things like that, and I've hardly known you. That's uh, as far as I, I that that's totally totally believable because from the minute I stepped into St. Mary's, I never left because they treated me like family, and that's when you know the love of God is there. And yeah. you know love is there, you know God is there, and then the yeah. people you no know, backbiting and people you know talking mm -hmm. to you, not looking at the, like you have four heads. But then just sharing the word, of God from, uh, you know, from pastor, and then everyone else, because you can walk into some churches and they look at you all upside the head. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And then you end up leaving because people don't understand how you run away people. But then when you're truly genuine and you have the love of God, it makes it real easy. Amen. 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 It does. It does. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Hi, Reverend Moore. How are you? Doing good. You doing yeah. good? Hi, Ray. Y'all gonna, gonna lose y'all a plug. Love. <laughs> it was Love. good. It was good seeing you this morning, Reverend. Yes, Lord. it was. Hey, y'all gonna lose y'all a plug. Thank you all again to Payne Family. Nancy, what are you cooking us today? I am cooking. Okay, so my son sent me this cookbook. <laughs> for Christmas and mm -hmm. he, him and I have been having a cooking Zoom date once a month. Mm -hmm. So today we are doing eggplant Parmesan with pesto. Okay, yes, well, that sounds good. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so she told me, she said, you can go drive your truck around for about an hour or so. This is the day with me and my son. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> That's right. Okay. I know where I'm at on the priority list. So I'm good. At least I'm on the list. Pastor, at least I'm on the list. <laughs> you know, that's why when you're sitting here, we, when he preached that, he said something. I said, I didn't pray a party or nothing on that one. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> well, Wade, you get to enjoy the fruits of her labor. Okay. Oh, hey, I stepped back. 
And I stepped back. Yeah, you stepped back gladly. <laughs> and gladly. Cool. When them children come running in the house and I, I go like this, and I see they about to run over me. So I just get out the way because they're trying to get to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I didn't get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hey, Sean, you've been saying. quiet this morning. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Good, good. Yeah. And hey, well, you they probably talk about me so much that he didn't have nothing in that reproduction, that reproduction process. <laughs> Sean, you look Sean, you look tired this morning. All that yawning you doing. <laughs> yeah, I worked on about I worked on five o'clock, two days in a row. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, so I need a nap. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's probably on his list. Mm -hmm. Things to do today. Well, Sunday <laughs> is recharge day. That's what God designed it for. The Sabbath, that's right? Yeah. 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 No word. God bless all y'all. We love you. I bless yes. you. Love you too. Have a good, Have a good week. Day. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Nice to see Bye. you guys. Bye. Thank you for the Bye. service. She said thank you for the service. <laughs> oh. Are you hoarse? Are you okay? Yeah. yeah, my throat's been bothering me the last couple of days. Okay. Oh. I don't know why. Uh, okay. I asked so, them if it was the radiation or whatever, but um, they said it'll go away. Okay. So we're not going to meet tonight then, huh? No, Either. no, because um, we'll be on for a couple hours with the tea, so we may not even be done till right at six. Oh, okay. Well, y'all enjoy yourself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get out. You sure you're all right? Uh huh. Yeah, I'm. I'm still kind of drained, but I guess it'll pick up after a while. Oh, okay. So, so Bobby, did did, did 